Hi, this is Danny Doyle, and welcome back to my Fire Emblem Eat the Sacred Stones free play LTC. I've got a series of one turns for you today. So to start out, we do a little bit more shopping. I grab the Torch Staff and then feed some stat boosters to my units. Notably, Cormag gets an Energy Ring, Gled needs two pairs of Swift Souls, and Valder needs two pairs of Swift Souls. Chapter 6 is our first Fog of War map. We start out by having Glenn charge bravely ahead into the fog and go to the village that normally contains just an antitoxin. You know, one of the most worthless villages in all of Fire Emblem. But here we get a pair of Swift Souls, so a considerable glow up for that village. Selena's gonna go ahead and light a torch so that I can see into the fog and, oh, uh... Okay, I think I should have been more specific. Selena, I need you to light a torch at the far end of your movement range so that I can see into the fog. Because otherwise, I can't warp my units closer to the boss, and, like, that's kind of the entire point of the torch staff. Well, I guess the secondary point of the torch staff is that Selena gets a level up, and the tertiary point of the torch staff is that Selena gets staff experience, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead now and... Warp Cormag over to deal with the Halberd fighter. This guy in vanilla normally is very hard to get his Halberd because he usually switches from the standard axe that he has equipped to a Halberd, and he'll only drop the unequipped item. However, in this particular instance, uh, I can kill him before he has the chance to try to kill Seth. Or, I guess it would be Orson, not Seth, in this particular playthrough. Speaking of Orson, Orson helps with some trade strats, and then I have Lyon, Warp Valter, all the way over to the boss. This is a little bit weird considering that uh, that guy works for Valter. In fact, in the opening cutscene to this chapter, he steals Erica's Brangle in order to deliver it to Valter. So I guess Valter is just coming to collect. Uh, Cormac's gonna go ahead and kill this fighter with the Axe Reaver. The energy ring that he got during preps makes it so that it is an exact kill. Even though he doubles, I don't want to waste Axe Reaver uses because all of my carries are Axe units, or rather are Lance units, so Axe Reavers are the way that I deal with Lance units. And, no, no, Volter, that guy, he has a gift for you! What the fuck? Bro, you need to calm down. Okay, I guess we just do an overkill crit instead. Oh my god. I I understand that he took uh, actions of his own initiative that maybe you're not happy with, but you can't just go around stabbing your employees, Falter. Like, what are the townspeople going to think of you? Oh, okay, I guess they approve, because they gave us an energy ring. Okay, uh, I mean, that's pretty baller, I guess, but don't do it again. Okay, the preps for Chapter 7 are pretty simple. I need to give an Energy Ring and a pair of Swift Souls to Valter, but luckily we, in the previous map, got an Energy Ring and a pair of Swift Souls, replacing the Antitoxin and Orion's Bolt. So, yay! Very good item upgrades. Alright, Chapter 7 is off to a fantastic start as Cormag charges ahead and murders a soldier who posed no threat whatsoever to him or to the clear and only gave us like seven experience cormac have you been spending a little bit too much time with Valter? that doesn't benefit us whatsoever i understand that like you getting trained so you can gain strength is good but seven experience is not anything worth writing home for Oh, is 8 experience? Okay, never mind. I guess that's relevant. Jesus Christ, these psychopaths. Anyway, Lyon is going to go ahead and warp both Valter and Glenn up to deal with the boss. And uh, then the rest of the map is basically, like, just nothing. Oh, one notable benchmark is that Lyon has capped his magic now. 30 magic is uh, awesome because that means 15 tiles of warp range. Unfortunately, uh... <laughs> 
the fact that he capped his magic did go ahead and make Reeve jealous, so Reeve makes a deal with Renok, telling Renok, hey, if you steal this energy ring for me, I will warp you over there, and then I can use the energy ring to cap my magic so that we can both be capped. Unfortunately for Reeve, I actually have different plans for that energy ring. Uh, because he's going to have a cap of 25, so it doesn't actually impact his warp range to be capped. So yeah. Selena's gonna go ahead and have Mern that warp staff. Uh, yada yada yada, this is staff experience, yada yada yada. And Valter forcibly delivers a pink slip to one of his employees. No, buddy, what are you doing? I just told you not to stab your employees. We've been over this. Oh my god. Okay, well, at least he gets a level up out of it, so that's an extra point of strength, which is nice. <sighs> These people, I'm telling y'all. The Knight's Crest is unfortunately something I'm not allowed to edit under my rule set, so it's basically just a bullion, and we seize and move on to the finale of part one. Alright, this clear is kind of the culmination of everything that the first seven chapters have worked towards. I'm gonna go ahead and swap the four-use warp staff onto Leon, and then force-feed Valter some energy rings. This does mean that the level up that I praised him for previously is kind of pointless. The speed from it is nice, but he would have gotten strength from the energy drop in order to reach his cap of 25 strength. Leon immediately warps Glenn over the wall. And then after a dance, he's going to also warp Valter over the wall. I think you can probably predict where this one turn is going, because we're warping our boss killer and we're warping our lord, but there's a slight complication, because there's a wall of three enemies blocking us from getting into the throne room. So that is why I needed to have both of the warpers in Erika's squad, instead of being able to spare one of them for Ephraim's squad on 5x. Reeve is going to go ahead and grab the two-use warp staff from Lyon and send Cormag over the wall. Now that all of our combat wyverns are approaching the throne room, it's pretty self-explanatory how this clear goes. Selena is going to go ahead and hammer that warp staff on Reeve, uh, which is why we wanted to trade them around in order to have the one with the lowest durability possible. While Selena is mostly doing this for her own staff experience, you know, her earning a one-use warp staff is definitely beneficial to the run. Anyway, Cormag is going to go ahead and put the skill that he practiced last map into battle, that being killing a soldier that is an incredibly low benchmark and gives him almost no experience. Uh, fortunately, this time around, the soldier is actually in our way, so yay, Cormag, you did it, the bare minimum to not be a psychopath. Uh, speaking of psychopaths, Valter is going to go ahead and approach Torado and kindly ask him to leave the throne. No, no, Valter, no, no, Valter, what? Have I told you about murdering your employees? If our relationship is to continue, you really need to- Oh my god, and you overkill crit too? Ugh, well, so Torado is clearly delusional from bleeding out because he starts telling Valter that he should be afraid of being killed by Valter. Although, honestly, considering everything that Valter has demonstrated, I wouldn't be surprised if he, like, cloned himself and then fought his clone to the death just to satisfy his enormous psychopathic bloodlust. Uh, but yeah, that is chapter 8 in one turn. Glenn goes ahead and seizes, and we see Ephraim in the cutscene, even though Ephraim's squad never showed up. So, that's kind of weird, and hopefully he doesn't have unintended consequences for Ephraim route. So one thing that you might notice about Ephraim route in this particular setting is, uh, Seth, who replaces Ephraim, isn't on my team. Uh, he appears on the world map, but he's not in the list of characters, which is a little bit concerning. Especially when you take into account the fact that the first chapter on Ephraim Route is a seas map. Uh, if we take a look at our battle preps, we don't have him, and we can only deploy 11 units. So... Uh, yeah, none of these people know how to seize, and the goal is to seize the throne? I think I'm going Erica route. 